I feel like we live in times what I call the oblivious epidemic where everybody is just so self-centered and self-focused that I don't give a damn what's happening around me. I'm just doing me. <laughs> This whole video is based on my opinions only. This doesn't mean that everybody has to think like I do. But I do think some of it is common sense though. I mean, just my opinion, of course. Okay, this one really annoys me. Let me know if it's the same for you in the comments below. But it's about when people are just so like carefree about kind of the world around them that they will just, you know, stop abruptly on the street. They will not care if they walk into you. <laughs> or they're simply walking really slowly, not for like medical reasons or they're older or something like that. No, they don't care if there are a lot of people behind them and they slow these people down. It is important not to take like good manners and etiquette to an extreme where we're so self-obsessed about what everybody else thinks and we're just there to please others. But I think, you know, we also have to be realistic that, you know, you're not alone on this earth. Like you are actually cohabiting with other people. And that means that we all have to find a form of middle ground so that coexisting with each other becomes in a way effortless. And so for this reason, I really do think that everybody carries a social responsibility to be like, okay, let me check in with their surroundings around me to make sure that I am kind of doing my duty or my part of what everybody should be doing. And then of course, there has to be a balance of you don't have to pull the entire load and you are allowed to also focus on yourself and prioritize what's good for you and so and so. But always bear in mind that, okay, there are other people too and you do carry responsibility. So in this case, you are not in the comfort of your own home where you can do whatever you want. You are utilizing a public space where everybody owns the space, not just you. Now, the next point is certainly becoming a pandemic in our society. You know, we all know there is a phone obsession happening. But what is really worrisome is when people are not just using their phones, you know, when they're sitting down or when they're just standing still. Now it's like, okay, it's normal to use your phone when you're driving, you know, at the same time looking down instead of looking up. Or let's say when you are walking on the street. And actually that can be a major hazard, especially for traffic around you. What's also very problematic, and we have just spoken about people who walk kind of slow. But in this case, when you're walking and staring at your phone, you're naturally going to be walking much slower. And depending on what's happening around you, that can be quite frustrating. As many of you know, on this channel, I teach loads of different things, not just elegance or etiquette, but also style and leveling up and personal development for those who want to become the best version of themselves. And so a common misconception that I do see is that people think that, aha, uh -huh, so what you're saying is that we have to be in our kind of formal behavior all the time. Otherwise, we're like bad people. Like, I'm not doing this video here because I want you to always be like, you know, uptight and strict and never be yourself. I think we have lost a lot of social skills and just simply decent mannerisms that affect our surroundings. And because we're losing that more and more as we are becoming a more individualistic society, it is negatively not just impacting us, but I would say our society as a whole. So I'm not saying now that you have to become Little Miss Perfect. Absolutely not. Like do elegance and do etiquette in moderation, which is why I've created this masterclass on the subject of table manners. Because listen, the way we eat at home does not necessarily always have to be very formal, very strict, but I want you to be equipped for all kinds of situations out there. This masterclass is available for you if you go to anabayetiquette.com and sign up. I have also more masterclasses on levelupclass.com, so go over there if you want more in-depth training and coaching with me. Now, this point is also very much aligned with kind of the weird times that we're currently in. And I'm talking about this whole, uh, you know, when people are just creating like TikToks and OnlyFans content in public spaces and hindering other people from like getting on with their lives. I'm not Little Miss Perfect here because 
as a content creator, I've certainly also, you know, put a bit of emphasis on like, oh, I need a cute outfit picture. Oh, let me like pose in the middle of the street. People just have to stop for a second, right? I'm trying to not do that very often these days because I find that kind of behavior a bit annoying and I don't want to be that annoying person. But then of course, I think there are extremes. I mean, everyone is allowed to take a cute picture on the street and if a bypasser has to just stop for a second, I don't think that's the end of the world. But I think what becomes problematic is when we have these TikTokers who have to do like their, you know, dances or lip syncing that is not just a quick snapshot of a photo. This is like one minute or 30 seconds. And I think that is pushing it. Now, the worst though, only fans content. Why God, why? We know what kind of content that is. We know that it's slightly spicy and provocative. And honestly, like quite really, like you have to really do that in public. I think we need to have certain boundaries as we are strangers. Like I do not want to see someone get intimate up close with somebody who is a complete stranger to me. I think that's quite off-putting and I think it's not something that should become an accepted thing in our society, like my opinion, of course. And if we're just gonna talk PDA in general, you know, kissing your partner or holding hands or hugging is fine. But when it's starting to become slightly more explicit, it just looks weird. We live in very phone-obsessed times. But guess what? That's not the only obsession we have. There is also this big picture-taking obsession, and that is all thanks to social media. And the fact that we all now have a camera and a video camera in our pocket, carrying with us absolutely everywhere. But that's not necessarily good news. I mean, certainly it's nice that we capture our beautiful memories more often than before. However, what is now becoming slightly, I'd say a bit sad, actually, I think it's more sad than anything else, is that if going to a concert before would look something like this, now it actually just looks like this. And one can say like, yeah, but who cares? So what? I don't think it's just a so what, because in the end of the day, you're there to be in the moment, not just to look at other people's phones. Like, I also do wonder, like, do people actually re-watch the stuff that they filmed? Because I know whenever I have been that person, I have pulled out my phone to film like a concert or something. I don't think I've ever re-watched that stuff after. So why are we so obsessed to like snap absolutely everything that's going on around us? So this part is actually gonna cover multiple <laughs> etiquette and elegance mistakes in my opinion. And I think that modern times have unfortunately led us to this place. But I think it's so important for us to kind of think about these things and reflect and reflect on our own behavior and be like, okay, how can I also improve my contribution to society? Because it's not just about me and me and me in the end of the day, we're here together. I'm not alone on planet Earth, and for this reason we need to take the whole collective into account. Can we just pause for a second and talk about online behavior? What is up with people's manners online? It's like they think like, ah, because I can be anonymous, I can say whatever I want. I can go on Anna Bay's video and say that she looks ugly or that I hate her. I mean, you know cliché. Would you actually say that to me in person if you met me on the street? Because so far, I mean, I have had loads of people come up to me on the street and those have always been my fans. I've never had a hater come up on the street, even though I know haters have seen me on the street. So what is the deal then? Why can you leave me a nasty comment, but you can't come up to me on the street and tell me this in person? Well, the problem is, it's the anonymity factor and the fact that people are just cowards. I haven't any courage at all. Oh, by the way, if you like my dress, it's actually part of my clothing line collection. Just go to anabayshop.com and look at my clothing line that you can now purchase. I think a lot of people think that it's kind of okay to be negative online because it's not the same thing as being in person. It actually is. I do believe that people are just more emotionally disconnected from their humanity. It is as if they let out their inner animal online. And this actually leads me to the next problem area in our modern times. Like if you think that you're doing society a service by engaging in cancel culture and like create some form of mob to go after somebody because, oh my goodness, somebody made a mistake, right? Think again. I think there are two problem areas with cancel culture because I think there are times when it is necessary, especially to uncover things that really require justice. But 
so many times is just a matter of people going after somebody because they don't like their opinion or they don't like if they made a mistake in the past and they think that that tells the whole, whole story of who they are today, which I think is very narrow thinking. It is not a classy mindset whatsoever to have. I also do think that in times when finally we are embracing diversity, diversity in people, but cancel culture is actually doing the complete opposite of what diversity is for. Because diversity is really about accepting everybody as they are, no matter what kind of shapes, sizes and forms they come in or colors or you name it. But what cancel culture does is that it says, I have no tolerance. If you don't think like me, if you have a different opinion, if you think like this or like that, then we're gonna cancel you. The mob is gonna come after you and make sure that nobody likes you. And so cancel culture becomes this kind of psychological game that people like to do because you know, nobody wants to be rejected and especially not rejected from a group. You can't sit with us! Then we have not showing up when you have RSVP'd yes. You know we live in times where this is the norm. I mean, I don't know how it was about 50 years ago. Maybe some boomers can let me know in the comments below. But like, what is going on? The fact that every host who organizes something now takes for granted that at least 30% of those who have RSVP'd yes are not gonna show up. Some might let you know last minute, like really last minute, and some are not even gonna bother with that. Why are we living now in times where people think that that is okay? Well, I think it kind of circles back to what I said earlier. We live in times when we're so focused on ourselves that we just can't walk the extra mile for other people to take certain social responsibility because we're so oblivious to it now. And so for that reason, I hope that here in this channel, at least we can take our social responsibility without turning into doormats or going in extremes or being so obsessed about other people and just catering for their needs. No, we're not doing that. We are finding a middle ground for what is fair, for what is right, as long as that works for us. Now, if you want to take this etiquette masterclass, go to anabayetiquette.com and also to levelupclass.com where you will find more information on how you can get further coaching and in-depth training with me. Now in my next video I will be teaching you more on elegance so make sure you watch any of these two videos that you see on the screen because I will see you there.